Welcome to the first threat management community office hours. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we've got uh, some people with us today. Um, we've got in the in the threat management team, Savash uh, in the front end. We've got uh, uh, Mathieu with back end, and we've got uh, Ray who helps out uh, with community. What, what, what area do you work in, Ray, your, your yeah. day job? So, yeah, so I'm in the community relations team. Uh, so I work with uh, mostly code contributors. So uh, I'm excited, excited to be here. We, we've done this for a couple of other stages. So this is awesome. So. Yeah, we've been talking yeah. about this and uh, it came from, from Alan so, um, or Mathieu, depends what you yeah. want to call him. He's got uh, some, an alias. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go through really quick so we can get to the good stuff. It's just, uh, some initial stuff, uh, who are threat management. The short answer is that we work on vulnerability management and we work in container security. And if you want a longer answer, there are the, the handbook pages have, uh, have all the information, the, the, all the, all the categories, all the features in very detail, what we do, including the roadmap. Uh, and if you're interested, just ask one of us. Um, another quick thing that I want to go through is how how to find work. So if you if you're looking for to contribute, um, there are a couple of ways that you can find it. So the easiest way is to go to to the issues section in uh, in GitLab, and uh, Mache is going to show you the the actual screen uh, in a minute. Um, and then for for the threat insights group, which is the which works with the uh, vulnerability management category. You can just use the, the this category, vulnerability management category. For the container security issues, there, there are different there are different category labels, uh, but they are all under DevOps Defense. So if you're interested in anything related to, to container security, you can just use DevOps Defend, and that might be simpler. So that to those top labels here allow you to find issues on this topic. The, the labels in the middle here are um, things that we're accepting for, for, from contributions for, for, from the community. So the first one is the one that you always have to look out for. Uh, and the second one is um, are for issues that we have pre-selected that we know that are easier, that are most people who, who understand the technology would have, wouldn't have uh, too much of a hard time. And Ray, do you wanna chime in here in general, if if uh, if a community contributor sees something that doesn't have these labels but they want to contribute, they can just ping us, right? Oh yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, for whatever reason, if if you don't see these labels, but if you're interested, and uh, yeah, I mean, we'll be happy to work with contributors. And I mean, if it, it's possible that some of the GitLab team members are working on something, but uh, you know. Even if there's an MR like ongoing, for example, if we can get some feedback from the community members uh, as we work on it, that that would be that would be that would be great. So, but if for, for some reason no one's working on it and and you want to volunteer, just raise your hand and ping any one of us at GitLab, and uh, we'll take it from there. So. Awesome, yeah. and welcome back, uh, Kev. Kev is a uh, one of our. Um, top contributors in threat management. He's done, I think, four four issues now? Yeah, something along that line, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, just, I just saw an MR that was merged by uh, Jose like a few hours ago. So nice to meet you, Kev. I, I've been seeing your MRs. So it's good to, <laughs> good, to, good to meet you here on the call. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah. Cool, and then uh, finally, if you, if you have a preference for front-end or back-end, um, issues you, you can also use those labels to to select what you're working for what you're looking for and then uh, ray and i talked a little bit about this but if you're looking for something to work um use these labels to find an issue um typically if if an issue isn't assigned to anyone it means nobody's working on it um for for the threat management uh team you can use uh those two aliases for back end and front end and if you're not sure, it doesn't matter. Anyone will be quite happy to, to, to help. It doesn't really matter if you get the wrong team. Um, and in terms of help as you're working, uh, you can also use these aliases, but there's also a Git uh, channel. Uh, and 
um, most people in in, um, in GitLab, well, everyone in GitLab has access to this because it's in our Slack. So um, there's a gateway we can, there, there are always gonna be someone there able to help. And I think that's it for the boring stuff for admin. I'll, uh, I'll pass the baton to, to Mathieu to do some screen, some, uh, some actual work. <laughs> Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Um, you can right. hear and see. That is great. Okay, so first of all, uh, Diego, you talked about labels. So I would like to show those labels in action. Uh, so when you go to the GitLab project and you apply those labels to the issues list, you'll get uh, something that you can start working on. Uh, so for example, here we have uh, right now three front end issues uh, that someone can pick up uh, and these are ready for, for for anyone to start working on them. So, uh, but before that, what you obviously need to do is to somehow set up your uh, your environment so to be able to work. Uh, so, of course, you can still uh, contribute uh, if you'd like to fix the documentation, take a look at some wordings. Maybe there's something you can improve. That's the easiest way to get into any open source project. Just start working on small things in the documentation, then over the time, uh, take something bigger. Uh, from the development side. But at the same time, uh, you can easily set up the GitLab environment in your local machine using GitLab development kit. Um, so the project uh, is available for you. You just need to take a look at the documentation overview and getting started, how to prepare your de dependencies and set up the whole GDK. It's all in the written form. And on our YouTube channel, uh, GitLab Unfiltered, you have certain uh, videos where, where it gets you uh, through the process of installing GTK. So I, I, I won't talk about that today. Uh, if you feel that it's something you'd like to, to hear, we can organize a separate meeting where we'll discuss that, uh, maybe with someone from, from the team that, that supports GTK. Um, so once you have an uh, issue that you can work on, uh, what we are trying hard to do in our team is to make sure we have implementation plan. Implementation plan is something that we're doing during the, the refinement. So you can, you can see what was the idea uh, that someone that refined the issue had to, to resolve the issue, right? So you have, okay, modify something here, uh, use that to improve something else. So you can, you can go through, the, uh, through those steps and fix something. Or if you have other idea, you can just uh, take a look at those suggestions, but do something absolutely different. It's not obligatory to implement that using the implementation plan. It's something that is just a help for others, so they can take a look and see if, if it's if it's uh, easy or not easy to fix that. Um, then, if you're talking about the code, um, there are two ways to do it. If you have the implementation plan, we usually try to add either uh, links uh, to the source code or we are using uh, like class names. So for example, I have dashboard projects create service. So I can go to my uh, virtual uh, like visual studio and I can, I can do the same like dashboard projects uh, create service. And I, I mean, I have the code, I can start working on this one and so on. But usually uh, you don't want to, to do that. You'd like to take a look where it all starts. So I'm, in terms of the front end and all the security dashboards, we have this first class in it, and everything, everything that's actually related to security dashboard will be here. Uh, so EE, because we are uh, working on the features for enterprise edition, uh, app asset JavaScript security dashboard, and you have it here. Um, okay, I talked about enterprise edition. Maybe I should talk about also about the license quickly. Uh, so Ray will tell you more about that maybe, but there in the handbook, you have the information what to do if you'd like to contribute to the feature that is in GitLab Enterprise Edition. So first start with the trial. Uh, if you will not be able to finish uh, your task uh, within that 30 days, you're, you're of course able to, to get the license and there's the whole process described here, how to get the license and, and Ray will be more than happy to help you getting that. I'll be happy as well. If you tag me, I can, oh. I, I can, I can uh, do go through the process. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's about the license. So I'm, I'm going to get back to, to our uh, source code. So yeah, here we have everything related to the front end and security dashboards. Uh, so you can take a look at the components, GraphQL queries, uh, and uh, stores, and so on. 
maybe Savash um, or someone else would like to chime in and, and take uh, and say, say a few words about that. But if not, I can proceed with the backend stuff. I think you're doing pretty good. So uh, go on. But but he's yeah, he's silently silently judging you. So be careful. <laughs> That's not working like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in terms of the backend, there are three ways to, uh, that we're like giving our features available for end users. So it's either internal API uh, and it's, it's available in the source code in the roots. So if you go to config root security, you'll have that. That's the entry point. Uh, so you'll have, okay, what, what kind of controller I should use uh, for, for certain uh, action and so on. So that's the first one. Uh, then we have GraphQL APIs. Uh, so, okay, everything, so we have those controllers here and we're trying hard to remove them over the time and move to GraphQL only. Uh, but at the same time, we also have the REST API. Uh, so if we're talking about GraphQL first, um, we go to GraphQL and you have two options, either mutate or uh, so you, you do some action in the GitLab that is changing the state or you, you're doing queries. So you either go to mutations and you take a look at the instance security dashboard and you have mutations here or to vulnerabilities and you have other mutations here available, available for you that are related to our work or you go to the types and here I have all types related to vulnerability. If the task is, for example, to extend the, uh, the vulnerability uh, type with additional fields, uh, like we've re recently added result on the default branch, for example, I was newly added field. So, so you just add field and then you need to make sure that this filter is available uh, for that class. May okay, I make a comment? If sure? um, that that's obviously from from the Rails side, um, if you're looking to use GraphQL just on the front end, uh, I think you're going to cover that as well, right, Maché? But there's um, yep. you don't need to browse the code to see the the API. There's this um, uh, handy thing there, GraphQL Explorer, and there's a uh, documentation for all the all the endpoints as well. Yeah. Exactly. And what's nice if we're talking about GraphQL is that if you do control in space, you'll get some help here. So for example, oh, I'd like to take a look at the project, right? And I would like to look for a project within, uh, like, let, let it be like, this will be the project and so on and so on. So I can, I can get that. I can get vulnerabilities for the project. So you can see if you're adapted to using that, it's very convenient tool uh, that you can use to to get the idea how the GraphQL works and how you can use that on the front end as well. So we're using that very often and it's, it's a huge help. And if you'd like to take a look at the documentation, it's available here, but I, I don't use it to be honest. Uh, I'm just using the, the auto completion that we have here and it's working very good. So, okay, getting back, getting back to the topic. I was talking about mutations. I was talking about the types. Uh, I got, then I got, um, sorry, sure. sorry, Alan, uh, got, got a comment here. Um, for to have a look to example queries, you can also uh, check in the front end under the security dash uh, security uh, dashboard uh, folder. Yeah, there is, yeah, the GraphQL folder here. We have example um, queries. Yeah, exactly. And these are written even better uh, than than usually write in the GraphQL API uh, explorer uh, because we're using fragments here. So, for example. Uh, this is the fragment, so I'm I'm going to reuse that fragment in multiple places that where I'm using GraphQL API, which is uh, on the front end, which is great. Um, okay, uh, so then we were, I was start I started talking about the models. This is how, where we all connecting to the database. Uh, so whenever you need to add something, uh, modify something. Uh, change uh, validation or something, you usually end up here in, in the model. And we don't really have namesakes for the model, but anything that is related to vulnerability, so you have this vulnerabilities, that's the one namespace that we're using, but most for the, for the most part, we're using the vulnerability model. That is here. Um, you, can, you could also have a look at the um, um, code owners file on the .gitlab anything they're pointing, pointing to threatening sites will be, uh, I think right now the, there's only backend stuff, but uh, if you look for threat threatening sites, 
yeah there you go there's the paths there are so that is a very good comment yeah That's and also a great way. Uh, i'm looking to put something for the front end in there as well I, I don't see a lot of other teams doing that so i've got to figure out uh, if that's something we we actually do yeah but i, I might i might do it and see what happens <laughs> That is great. Okay. Thanks for checking. Uh, great. Thank you. Um, and the last thing, so we're trying to, and we're making sure that our board is up to date. We uh, discuss everything in the issues. Uh, we uh, take care of the workflow state. So we really make sure that you'll, uh, that you'll not take the issue that someone else is working on because it was done a science or something. We're really making sure that it's all, it's all uh, organized. So if, if you take the issue, for example, let me take this one. Uh, you decide that you'd like to start working on this one. You can either assign it to yourself and make some comment, hey, I would like to start working on this one. Is there something else that I need to know before doing that? Uh, and if not, then you'll just change the, the workflow to, uh, to in-depth. Uh, so if you go here, labels, in-depth, and you're good to go. Uh, you'll work on this one, you'll create an MR, uh, what's good about GitLab when you create an MR, when you send the code uh, through Git to GitLab, you'll get the automatically generated link uh, that you'll just click and it will create for you the, the MR. And then you'll get some, some links. Let me go to one MR and you'll see the link and it's really useful. Uh, so for example, here, here it's someone who was not using the template. I will I will take a look at mine and Mars because this would be easier. Um, in, in the meantime, I can um, I wanted to put emphasis on um, picking up issues. I think it's super important if you pick up an issue to assign it yourself uh, because uh, recently I've I had I created the, uh, duplicate work because the issue was taken by a community contributor but it was not assigned to him, uh, so I didn't know that and I picked, yeah, I picked up the issue. So this, this, will, help, um, pre this will help preventing these, these uh, cases. So it's extremely important if you, if you can assign it yourself and then put it into uh, development uh, using the in-dev uh, label. That helps a lot. Yeah, I mean, just, just one thing. Unfortunately for community members, un un unless they're part of the core team, they're not able to like, assign issues to themselves. Um, or, or even add labels. So, I was gonna uh, I mean, ask. There, yeah, yeah. So there are instances. I mean, I, I try. I mean, not just myself. But a lot of people try to assign the issue to to the contributor who started working on something, but it's it's manual. So, and then it, I mean, sometimes I forget to do that as well. Like I'll yeah. see an issue, somebody's working on it, and and I'll do my best to assign that issue so that uh, accepting merge request label gets this, you know, it gets removed and then there's only one person working on it, but it's, it's not perfect. Like it's, it's one of the things that we should probably look into in terms of automating, but uh, yeah, I mean, so I think it's onus is sort of on us to make sure that, that uh, assignment and, and labeling is done uh, for the contributor. So, but, so a comment is really the safest. Yeah. If, if, if somebody does a comment, we'll, one of us will, will do the assignment and put the right labels. Yeah. So well, exactly. I'm, happy to, yeah. I'm happy to do the, the admin overhead. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, thank you. Thank you for those comments. Um, uh, yeah, and when you create an MR, what's important is you take a look at this conformity uh, list. So what you need to make sure that your MR is uh, it's written and the code is written according to some, some rules that we all need to uh, follow in GitLab. So code review guidelines, merge request, if you're doing anything in the database, that's super important to make sure that, that you do everything uh, according to, to those guidelines and styles and so on. This will help you better understand what we're working on and how we're doing that. And at the same time, you'll prevent uh, yourself from getting lots of comments uh, asking you to change something because because it is not according to some uh, to some guidelines. So I will encourage you reading that. Uh, if you want to read more about the whole development docs, you can just go to, to docsgitlab.com and you'll get the contributor and development docs and you should have all the information that is needed here, either for front end or for back end or working with GraphQL API or anything. Uh, so we try to we're trying hard to uh, to have everything documented so it's easier for you to, to search to it. Okay. 
that was that was all I, I have for today. Tiago, would you like to add something? Yeah, one one thing uh, we when we were talking about uh, GraphQL, um, there are also REST APIs for working with vulnerability management. Uh, be aware that the REST APIs for vulnerability management are in alpha, and we do prefer the the GraphQL. I think th there is only one uh, endpoint in REST that uh, GraphQL doesn't do around vulnerability findings. Uh, but even that one, we, we look into implementing GraphQL very soon. So um, by all means, um, go, go to that first. Yep, that, that, that is true. Uh, we were talking about that just before the meeting and, and I forgot to add it to my <laughs> That's <agenda>. all good. <laughs> so, yeah, we have an API as well. Uh, now it's called the V4 API. Uh, for vulnerabilities, uh, we're we're doing what we can to move all the functionality that we initially wrote in, in APIs uh, to GraphQL APIs. Um, so we're still there are a few things that we need to improve and work on. And on the front end, we're trying to limit the usage of those APIs. So we're trying to make sure that we're only using uh, GraphQL APIs. So so yeah, but but yeah, there's also API that you can you can use or you can work on uh, if there's any certain issue that you'd like to take. Um, do do we um, do we have any issues to step through um, that uh, we we would like to do or not really? I I didn't prepare yeah. any. It, it's okay if you haven't. Just just asking in case. Uh, Savash. I haven't. I had something or no yeah that's all good yeah we we can we can do that on a on a on the next one um how about you kev any any comments or questions um having having done a few issues and uh, want to share what were some of the hard things or one of the good things things to improve uh yeah uh I had uh, one thing with the license we were talking or you were talking about it earlier um I tried to um, get it with the admin account, but that didn't work because it was the um, uh, root at example.com email. So I had to create, or I used the second account to um, get it to my email and then uh, I could install the license. Ah, so so was, when you, when you did the request, you went to the, to the root admin account. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was setting something up in the admin panel and then I, uh, or because the other user was an admin. So, I just did over the route. So that was a bit confusing that uh, I could that's enter good, everything. That's a good tip. We, we can probably yeah. update our docs to, to make that easier or clearer. I'll take a note. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, any, any words, um, any, anything else, Kev? Uh, what I uh, what I found also pretty helpful was um, the guide that was also, uh, I think, uh, Lindsay Care did that. Um, it's in the description uh, in the in the comments of the um, uh, office hours issue of the current one. Um, the instructions how to get the um, vulnerability list and the security dashboard. I found that really helpful because I was kind of lost on that because I never used it before. Yeah, that uh, one. Um, the FAQ that she created. Yes. Yeah, that is a great point. We're, uh, we also have something in our roadmap to, to make it even easier uh, because yeah, we, we, uh, we, we see that people would like to get some vulnerabilities uh, into their projects and uh, either our contributors that are not working with, uh, with our code, they're asking for that and we, that's great that Lindsay heard that. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that comment. It's, it's a great comment. Yeah, that's a good idea. We, uh, we have projects that will generate vulnerabilities, but in order to run them locally, you, you need a runner. And the GitLab runner is one extra step on, on beyond GDK. I mean, the instructions are all there, but if, if, uh, if, um, if you can skip there and have an easy way to load the data so you can work with it, that, that probably helps. So that's another thing we're looking to do. Yeah, I already knew how to set up a runner, but uh, it was j just like an extra strap step. And if you could do it without it to just seed some into the database, that would be cool. Yeah, through the console or some, some CDB seed. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great.
Those are good comments. We, Thanks a lot. Do we have an issue around that, Tiago, uh, about seeding data? Or we do not. I think I it's a great idea. Yeah, me too. And uh, and uh, I want to move this uh, FAQ to uh, to a more visible place. So as part of uh, um, the the post post office hours, uh, we we're gonna create the next uh, issues for for the for the upcoming office hours. And um, then if somebody wants to to find when the next office hours are, Maciej, um, do you mind if I take over the screen? Sure. Thank you. So the the office hours that are booked right now um, is this one that we're having, and there's one that Ray booked. So Ray, every everybody who holds uh, office hours in in GitLab, they use this label, right? This is a safe. Yeah, tip. I mean, yeah, it's uh, they should. I mean, sometimes like I think we forget. I think the package also has an office hour during hackathon next week, but I probably forgot to add that label. So it's my bad. <laughs> no but, worries. Uh, yeah, I mean, so speaking of like hackathon, I mean, if you want to add any issues that you want people to work on during the hackathon, I mean, I think you did a, I saw a couple of front end issues that uh, during the presentation, like if you want to, uh, let me add a couple of links here on the chat. So uh, Kevin, I, I don't know if you know of our quarterly hackathon, but uh, we have hackathons every quarter. Uh, the Q3 one is next week. And here's also an issue, let me find the link, uh, where we advertise a list of issues that we encourage people to work on. Um, and then we largely broke it down into front end versus like back end. Uh, but we also have uh, the query that uh, Tiago, you showed uh, for issues good for new contributors. Um, but yeah, so for uh, for threat management, if you want to add additional issues there uh, that, that you want to highlight for the hackathon, feel free to do that. Thanks for that. We might do it. Yeah, yeah. so. Great. Yeah. Um, any any questions, Kev? Do you want to ask maybe um, Savash or, or Maciej about uh, development things you had trouble with um, since we we are open for Q and A now. Um, no, not to put you on the spot. If you don't have anything, that's <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it went pretty smooth, uh, except the two things I mentioned. And yeah, yeah, everything else is just working a bit more on it, and then it should be easier. Too good. Let's hope yeah. it stays that way. Yeah, Thank I mean, you if you don't mind my asking, Kevin, like, I mean, what sort of prompted you to start contributing, it and how did you find? issues that you wanted to like work on? I mean, it's like a standard question that I that I typically ask uh, like recent contributors, but yeah, if you don't mind sharing that, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I found, uh, well, I, I'm just gonna uh, quickly start where I found GitLab. So uh, I found GitLab uh, quite a while ago when I was looking for like good alternative for a private project. Um, mm -hmm. And I had, another alternative or two other two alternatives um but just the fact that gitlab was free was like uh, also for fr uh, private project was like huge um mm -hmm. which was not common i think um and then uh, i really started to read into it and i read about it that it was open source and um yeah that you're really transparent and um so then uh, at some point like uh, this month I was like curious and uh, looked at the code base and then like, mm, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll uh, contribute a bit because like, I, um, like th that just everything is integrated in one tool and that's not like a tool chain where you have Jenkins and another source uh, code management. Um, and yeah, so I uh, found in the, in the handbook, I think there's uh, in the con uh, community contributions, uh, page there's like um that you can filter for um accepting merge requests and uh, good for new contributors and so i just searched that in the in the issues list and okay. um 
yeah, they have found some and I kind yeah, I kind of um, had some fun doing the thread inside once. So, yeah, that's that's how I found them. Oh, that's that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that the landing page was helpful. Um, but uh, great. I mean, obviously, we appreciate it. And, uh, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, while in the process of contributing, just let us know if uh, there's anything that we can do to make your lives e make your life easier. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I second that. Amazing. Well, thanks so thanks so much for sharing all that, Kevin. Uh, it's really appreciated. Um, and Ray, uh, do you have any final words? I, if we don't have anything else, I'm gonna I'm gonna close this uh, yeah. half an hour early. No, I appreciate you setting this up. And I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this before the hackathon next week uh, was to, I mean, get this content available on, obviously on YouTube, so people can hopefully view it before the hackathon. Uh, I think you, I mean, all of you like cover a lot of good materials. And uh, if we can highlight issues that, that you want to advertise for the hackathon, I think there'll be another way to get uh, more contributors involved. And that, I mean, yeah, definitely looking forward to expanding the, uh, the the number of contributors in in threat management. Excellent. Yeah. We'll, we'll do. We'll, we'll add to it. And um, yeah. Lindsay, who's my colleague, uh, the engineering yeah. manager for for front end, she's she's going right. to add uh, some other. Uh, op we're going to pre-book all the events for the rest of the year. So cool. Um, awesome. People can book, can you know, plan plan yeah. to attend, right. and and also ask questions. Somebody's having any tricky, tricky issues that they're working on or trouble with anything. We we love to do some screen share and just some live hacking. Yeah, very great. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Um, have a good day or evening, depending where you yeah. are. Well, have a good Friday. Right. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bye, everyone. everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.